I'm Brooke and I work at Exploration Place. We're going to talk about the Western Interior Seaway, Kansas State fossils, and how to dig up bones. In the Cretaceous time period, Kansas was underwater and it was called the Western Interior Seaway. The Western Interior Seaway reached all the way from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic Ocean. That's about 2,000 miles or more. In the Western Interior Seaway, there were many marine fossils, some of them that you can see right here on this table. We had trilobites at the bottom of the ocean. We also had ammonites swimming around. And we also had one of our state fossils, the Tylosaurus, which is a type of Mosasaur. On April 4th, 2014, the Tylosaurus became the official state marine fossil and the Pteranodon became the official state flying fossil. So the Tylosaurus lived in the Western Interior Seaway and it was one of the deadliest predators swimming around. There are many different types of Mosasaurus and Tylosaurus is one of them. Mosasaurs have these large flippers and a large body and a large snout and jaw. It would locate its prey by using the snout on its jaw. If you look here, you're gonna see an example of a flipper from a mosasaur, like Talosaurus. Here, similar to us, a lot of marine reptiles, as well as other animals, have similar arm structures, just like us. One bone, two bones, little bones, long bones. If you look at the Talosaurus flipper here, you're gonna see the long bone would have been right here, you have the two bones, mini bones, and long bones, which would have been its fingers like us. So we are very similar to a Tylosaurus in one way or another. Tylosaurus lived during the Cretaceous time period, the same as many dinosaurs like uh, Triceratops or T-Rex. But the Tylosauruses are not dinosaurs. They're marine reptiles that swim along the ammonites and trilobites and other marine fish too. Now, the Tylosaurus can swim around really fast and its flipper and tail really helped it. As they moved around, they were able to flap really fast. So they adapted to that water so they could swim around and that's how they catch their prey very quickly. Tylosauruses, we believe that they eat a lot of fish, some turtles, and also maybe some birds that went diving into the Western Interior Seaway. So they had a wide range of diet and they ate almost everything. Sometimes people even say that they even ate smaller mosasauruses too. Now the Talosaurus slowly started to extinct towards the end of the Cretaceous period. That means they started to vanish and they were no longer existing. We think that the meteor that killed off the dinosaurs had also a huge impact on killing off the rest of the mosasaurs as well as probably some climate change as the world started to change. At the end of the Cretaceous time period, there was no more Tyrosauruses and definitely when the Western Tier Seaway started to rescind. Now, let's talk about our other state fossil, the Pteranodon, and let's switch this out. Our other state fossil, which is a flying fossil, is the Pteranodon. Pteranodons also lived during the Cretaceous time period, the same as Tylosaurus and some other dinosaurs such as T-Rex and Triceratops. Now, Pteranodons and other pterosaurs were one of the first vertebrates to ever take the skies, which is really cool. They had very long wingspans and one of the largest ever found in Kansas was about 50 feet wide. That is so wide! Pteranodons also had long beaks, so they were able to grab fish when they dove into the Western Interior Seaway. One of the very first fossils was actually found in Western Kansas by O.C. Marsh, a paleontologist. Pteranodons not only lived in Kansas, although most of them are actually found in Kansas, and that's why it's one of our state fossils, but all along the Western Interior Seaway, such as Wyoming and Nebraska, so it seems like they really depend on the Western Interior Seaway just as much as our other state fossil, Tylosaurus. There's many different sizes of pteranodons. A fossil here, now this one seems like a very small fossil because the bones would be a lot bigger on other pteranodons. Now this one looks all jumbled up and some of the paleontologists when we go out on digs 
Sometimes this is how we find bones. So to identify them, you really have to be an expert in your field, which many paleontologists are. So here, I believe it looks like a leg bone here, because this is the top of the leg bone, maybe some vertebrae and some ribs in here. But again, the experts will really know, and this is how you kind of find bones out in the dig site, especially in Western Kansas. So they're not always perfect, and you don't always find a full species laying there as it died. Maybe it got washed away, or maybe just millions of years, different erosion moved the bones. So this is a very accurate way of paleontologists digging up bones and now preserving it so we don't want to ruin the fossils any more than what it is right now. And now, we're going to learn how paleontologists dig up bones. If you're a new paleontologist starting out on your journey to learn how to identify dinosaur bones or mosasaur bones, well, there's a trick I would like to show you before we start digging in. So when you're going around, you have to identify what's rock and what's bone. And one of the tricks that paleontologists use, definitely if you're an amateur one, is to lick the bone. That's right, you heard me. Because dinosaur bones have lots of little pores in it. And so when you lick it, it's gonna stick to your tongue. So here, I actually have a fossil of a dinosaur bone. And this is how we test it. <laughs> All right, enough about that. Now we're actually gonna dig into our uh, dig site here and let's see what we can find. This is a fun activity that you can do at home as well. Here we're using an M&M cookie, we have some toothpicks and paintbrushes. Now paleontologists, definitely when they go to western Kansas to dig up some mosasaurs, well they need all sorts of tools and here you can see some tools that we use when we go out on digs. We have a hammer and we have different sizes of screwdrivers with different heads because they all have a different function and then paintbrushes of all different sizes. So here, now we have our toothpicks, which are gonna help me really get into the cookie or the dirt. Now paleontologists, I'm gonna go ahead and dig in. Now that we have found our dig site, we've found the bones, you wanna have your cookie, and you wanna go ahead and grab your toothpicks. And here, we wanna be really careful around the M&Ms because that's what our bones are. And paleontologists wanna be really careful because we don't wanna scrape the bone or damage it anymore because it's been in there for millions of years. So we wanna identify it and you're just gonna kinda of poke around a little bit near the bone, being really careful. And there's all this rock over here. So if we can try to remove this rock, which is kind of hard sometimes. So let's see if I can actually use my hands because sometimes paleontologists, we do need to use our hands. Sometimes we have gloves to help protect it. So let's see if I can break just a little bit of this dirt. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I don't want to get any more close. I want to use my toothpicks now. Now these toothpicks are representing screwdrivers. We use a lot of screwdrivers because they're small and they have different heads to them. So some of them have flat heads, some of them have pokey heads, which helps us really dig next to the bone without really hurting the bone. Because you have to be delicate. Ooh, this one's coming along nicely. Now you're probably seeing some little blue flakes in there and that's okay. We call that float. That means it's lots of little dinosaur bones or mosasaur bones or pteranodon bones. Okay, we're doing good. And to get a closer look, you can use your paintbrushes and you can kind of wipe away some of the dirt or the cookie around your bone. Oh, we are doing fantastic. I'm gonna move some from our dig site here and we're gonna keep trudging on. Now I'm making a little trench. Paleontologist makes trench too. So that way we can get around the bone, but you're not exactly on the bone. So a trench is just making a little way around and I'm gonna make a little trench all the way around our bone and then we'll be able to safely get it out of the ground. Again, I'm gonna use my paintbrush. You can see in that trench, it's going very well. It looks like I have another dinosaur bone right over here next to it. So you have to be careful, careful because sometimes there can be bones upon bones upon bones. So sometimes paleontologists actually need to decide is a bone worth keeping or do we need to destroy it to get out a better bone? They don't want to destroy any bones, but sometimes that call has to be made. All right, 
We're getting close because our bone is getting loose. And earlier I mentioned toilet paper and paper towels. Well, that's because when we remove this bone, we're gonna want to uh, jacket it. And the jacket helps prevent any damage from when you transport the bones from the dig site to the museum it's going at. And so yes, we use toilet paper and we use um, paper towels to help us. And it protects so when we put the jacket on, which is plaster, it doesn't ruin the bone. Okay, I think we're almost there, everybody. Let's see, I'm gonna brush this away. We did it! We have our dinosaur bone and I'm gonna pick it up. Our first one out of many from this cookie. Now you can keep digging out all your bones from your cookie. I'm gonna try another one. Now you, I talked earlier about my bone breaking and you can even see another bone here that's starting to break off as well. Well paleontologists, we do have a lot of bones that break in the process of trying to get out bones, which is okay. We have something called paleo glue, and it's a very specialized glue that allows paleontologists to glue back fossils together, either on the dig site or back in the lab. Sometimes if a bone breaks and it's a really bad break, we'll still take in the bone, and we'll try to put it together as best as possible, um, but sometimes it's good just to keep bones so we have research later. All right, let's see how mine's doing. Now I'm going actually pretty fast at getting these bones out, but paleontologists can take many, many weeks. A lot of paleontologists go out to dig sites during the summer time period because of the longer days as well as the warmth. Because in the winter, it's really hard during the different elements to dig up bones. Now because paleontologists dig up bones in the summertime, we have to protect ourselves. And so what you see, what I'm wearing, is what paleontologists wear. We wear long sleeve shirts, so this one's able to fold up, and then I can make it longer to protect myself from the sun. It's also very light material, so even though I'm digging up bones in the desert or, or western Kansas, it's still light enough where I'm not overheating myself. I also have a tank top underneath, so that way if I do get really warm, I can take off my overcoat, but I also want to be aware of the sun. Wearing lots of sunscreen is also important. I also have a bandana on and other paleontologists also wear different types of hats so that way the top of our heads are protected and you don't want to overheat and you have to drink lots and lots of water. Sometimes even in a dig site in a whole summer, it's not enough time to get out all the bones. So paleontologists has to keep going back to the dig sites to get out one bone. So each bone, it takes different times for different bones to come out. Sometimes the rock around it is very, very hard, so it's gonna probably take two field season. Sometimes, like this cookie, the ground is very soft, and so it's really easy to get bones out. So each bone to get out of the ground really varies on how long it takes to get out. Oh, I got another one. All right, I got out two bones, and I hope you keep digging and try to get out all the bones as well. I hope you learned a lot about our Kansas State fossils, the Tylosaurus and Pteranodon. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, I'm Brooke, and have a great day.